John 20, 24 through 29. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in his house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hands and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Prayer of Illumination. Dear God, thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you this day. Help us to see your love in the words presented through the youth today. Open our minds and hearts in the way that we may serve you best. In the name of your precious son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So this morning's homily is a little different than most Sundays. On Youth Sunday, I write a homily with, uh, that's directed to these folks in the front pews over here and invite you all to listen in as we continue a conversation that began a long time ago, um, a conversation that preceded our planning for this time, a conversation that started with many of these kids when we were gathered on a rug here in the courtyard or on the steps in the chancel, as Samueli said. So, friends, as we worked together to craft this service, you selected scriptures and songs that centered around a common message of asking questions, of not being afraid to name what one doesn't know about God, what one doesn't know about the universe, or even what we don't know about ourselves. You've had this wisdom I've seen throughout the years that questions are portals to deeper understanding. I've seen this in confirmation classes that have gotten sidetracked with questions of epic proportion. And remember those flip charts we already had to write them all down when we were in person? Your questions reflect not only your curiosity, but also your wisdom. Your questions are not a sign of what you are lacking, but of all that you have to offer. For it is only by engaging the tough questions that one can gain knowledge. And only by wrestling with these questions can one figure out then how to make a lasting difference in the world. The scripture passages you've chosen today are snippets of conversation in which wise and righteous individuals, those whose lives are committed to following God, in which these individuals raise questions in which they are having, in, mo in both of these cases, crisis of faith. These people refuse to jump to conclusions, which, unfortunately, too many people say is a mark of faithlessness. But rather, these people of faithfulness name their confusion. They own their doubt. They say what others are thinking. They are brave enough to ask. Now, through their questions, they draw closer to God, a God who meets them in their questions. What's more, and what is fascinating, is that God answers their questions with questions. It is in this conversation of questions that a gateway to ex an experience of their active, living, perplexing, loving God takes place. It is through these questions that they encounter God. It is through these questions that their knowledge is expanded, that their relationship with God is deepened. It is through these questions that they grow. So it will come as no surprise to you as I offer a few snippets of wisdom this morning that my first challenge is similar to, the Boaz, to Boaz's assignment to all of us. Keep asking questions. Don't settle for the status quo. 
Don't, ex don't accept pat answers that were spoon-fed to you about life or the universe or God or even about yourselves. All of those things, all of those things simply are not that simple. Get comfortable with complexity. Notice what troubles you, what compels you. Notice what you find intriguing and then dig in. Ask questions. And if your answers are not satisfactory, as Boaz reminded us a lot of times, we're met with, I don't know. Ask more. But take the time to form a good question. Remember, Boaz's call was that we not just ask a bunch of questions, but that we ask good questions. As any good scientist works hard to form a hypothesis before conducting an experiment, take a step back and see what is it you are trying to learn. A well-formed question generates a clearer pathway toward understanding. It will unveil not only truth but possibility. It will show wherein we might find corruption or also good, and it might lead to more questions but that just means you're getting somewhere. And don't shy away from the questions that are being asked of you. I had a political science professor in college who amazed me with his ability to ask the next best question of me that would open my understanding. It was un uncanny. He could hear my ideas and my thoughts, but then he would ask the question that would make me go, uh-huh, I hadn't thought of it that way, and take my learning process further. My ability to learn was not dependent on his presentation of information, though he was very good at that too, but my ability to learn flourished because of his ability to ask good questions of me. His questions honed my thought process, they led me toward deeper self-examination, and they stoked my curiosity, wondering how I might not only engage these ideas, but how I might engage the world. And although I only had one class with him, unfortunately, he is one of the most influential teachers I've ever had. Remember, though, that questions are not relegated to classrooms, whether they're Sunday school classrooms or confirmation classrooms or classrooms in school. There are others in your midst who are trying to form the best question of you on college applications or job interviews, as you make new friendships, as you try to teach someone about an issue that is passionate to you, as you find love, as you discern your vocation. Questions form deeper relationships. They nurture our own knowledge of ourselves, but they nurture our connection to each other. And so know that the God who welcomes questions the God who meets questions with questions, the God who in the gospel says, ask, seek, knock. This is your God, a God of complexity, a God of awe, a God of wonder, a God of creativity, a God who invites you to explore, to explore this God, this world that God has made, and to explore the amazing creatures each one of you are. Know that good questions don't come to trip you up, but help you grow. Good questions allow you to be more authentic, engaged, and inspired. And so as you go out into the world this day, go forth with the courage to ask good questions, a willingness to answer the good questions asked of you, and the knowledge that you were made, redeemed, and are sustained by the power of a God whose questions and answers and love know no end. So keep me posted as you explore this world. I am better because of your questions. And for that, I say thanks be to God. Amen.